So now, find the domain of f. So to find domain, we're going to look from the left side of the graph to the right side. Notice how it starts and ends with points instead of arrows. So the domain does not include all real numbers. It's just going to go from the x value at negative 4 to the x value at positive 4. With those solid dots in there, it's including those two points. Number two, find the range of f. To do the range, we go from bottom to top, and we're just looking at the y values. So automatically, when you see the word domain, you know you're just talking about x values. When you see something that says the range of f, you're just talking about the y values. You're not going to list the point for negative 3 and positive 4, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 3. You're just listing x values. And you're not going to list the points negative 4 or positive 4, negative 3, and 0, 3. You're just giving the y values for the range. So that's just going to go from negative 3 up to that high point right there at positive 3. Okay, let's list the x-intercepts, if any exist. So we have an x-intercept here and one here. So we have an x-intercept at negative 2, 0. My negative kind of blended in with my 2. I feel like I want to rewrite that. And then we have another x-intercept at positive 2, 0. Is it possible for a graph not to have any x-intercepts? It is absolutely possible for it to not have any x-intercepts, which is why the question says, if any exist. The entire graph could be below the x-axis. The entire graph could be above the x-axis. It might have asymptotes there, so it may never cross the x-axis. So it's always possible to not have x and y intercepts. Okay, list the y-intercept if any exists. Now, if this is a function, we're only going to have one y-intercept. We had two x-intercepts. We could have any number of x-intercepts. But for y-intercepts, a function only has one y-intercept. If it has more than one point intersecting the y-axis, then it fails the vertical line test at the y-axis, right? So there's only one y-intercept for this function at 0, 3, where it crosses the y-axis. Okay, find the zeros of f. Well, earlier today, we talked about how zeros and x-intercepts are the same thing. So the zeros are just negative 2 and positive 2 because they are just where the, x where the y values equal 0. It's the x values where the y values equal 0. That's where zeros are, right? Okay, now we get into territories where people become unsure of themselves. Solve the function when y is less than 0. So y is less than 0 under the x-axis. When we solve something like this, we're giving intervals for where that is true. Okay, So we're going to give our intervals for below the, the x-axis. So we have an interval below the x-axis from negative 4 to negative 2. I'm just doing the x-intervals for where the y-value is smaller than 0. I don't need to list the y value that's smaller than 0. I'm just giving the x value for where that happens. So it's happening from negative 4 to negative 2. I'm going to use a union to say I'm combining these two sets of points together. And then we have another set of points here that is below the x-axis from positive 2 to positive 4. So when you're solving an inequality using a graph like that, it's going to be a range of values usually that solve that inequality because it's this entire portion of the graph and this entire portion of the graph. Determine f of 2. Basically what we're saying is x equals 2. So we want to figure out what y is. Sorry, I was just going to write down the answer. I'm just kind of doing the explaining and writing the answers. Okay, so we're looking at where x equals 2. So I'm going to go on my graph, x equals 2 here. Well, where does the graph touch? Where, what is the y value of the graph when x equals 2? Well, the y value of the graph when x equals 2 is 0. You don't need to explain it. The answer is 0. But you could explain it. I'm just going to write it down. So y is 0 when x is 2. That's how I know that the answer is 0. Okay, 
solve f of x equals negative 3. Now we're going to go backwards. Instead of finding an x value and then determining its y value, we're going to find a y value and determine its x value. So the y value is negative 3. So we have a y value of negative 3. Anywhere along this line right here is where y equals negative 3. How many different x values exist for y equaling negative 3? Well, there's an x value at negative 4, and there's an x value at positive 4. So there are two solutions to that question, two values where the x value um, gets the same y value at negative 3. Remember how we talked about that with functions? You might be thinking at this point, wait, does that mean it's not a function? No, it passes the vertical line test, it just doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So it... Um, it's okay for all for our class to maybe have two people with the same birthday, same y value. There's just other things that's not okay if it's a function. Okay, number nine, find the number of solutions to f of x equals one. So f of x equals one would basically just be a horizontal line where y equals one, which would happen right there. Well, how many points does the graph with this imaginary line y equals one cross the graph? that's pictured. We'll cross at two points, one here and one there. Notice that um, if you try to match that up with x values, it would be a decimal that we're unsure of. So it's not actually asking us for the solutions, it's just asking us to find the number of solutions. So there are two solutions because there are two places where the horizontal line would cross the graph. Okay, so does f appear to be even, odd, or neither? So we don't have a formula for this to plug numbers into to see if it's going to be the same signs or opposite signs or a combination. So for this one, we're just going to look at it. What does the symmetry look like? Does it look like it would be the same if we turned it upside down? Or does it look the same if we cut it down the middle, the same on each side? So since it looks the same on each side, this would likely have even symmetry. So we call this an even function. Okay, number 11, list the intervals on which f is increasing. So there's only one piece that's increasing. So the y value is getting bigger. We just want the x values where that happens. So the uh, y is getting bigger from where the x values start at negative four and where the x values end at zero. What are the intervals on which f is decreasing? So that would be where the graph is going downward starting and ending x values. So the starting x value where y is going downward is 0 and the ending x value would be 4. You know how when we do interval notation we do brackets if we're including the number like we did on domain and range? We're never going to do those square brackets when we're doing... Oh, I put that the wrong place. We're never going to do those square brackets when we're doing increase and decreasing and constant because we're not like giving a place that's included, that's not what it means. We're just giving where does it start and end. So it's just parentheses. Okay, list local maximums if any exist. So the graph goes up to a point and it goes back down. So that's a local maximum at 0, 3. List local minimums if any exist. There are none. No local minimums. Why? I mean, we have a minimum here and here but they are not what we call local minimums because the graph does not go back up on the other side of each of those points. It only starts at that bottom point, goes up, or comes down to that bottom point and doesn't go back up. So we don't have any. You could say not applicable or none or whatever indicates we don't have any. Okay, find the absolute maximum. There's always an absolute maximum. There's always a highest y value and a lowest y value. Um, wait, it says if it exists though. So that's a little weird because I feel like, oh, I guess if it exists, that means sometimes our absolute maximum is infinity. Our absolute minimum is infinity, in which case, can you really say that it has one? It doesn't really if it's infinity, right? So I think that's why the question includes if it exists, because if it goes to infinity, then it really doesn't exist. So find the absolute maximum. It's at a y value of 3. I'm not even going to bother writing the zero. We already know that it happens at three zero from our previous question right above it. 
find the absolute minimum if it exists. See, now here's another reason to not worry about that x value, because the lowest y value is a negative 3. That's the lowest that our graph gets to. And that happens two places, at negative 4 and at positive 4. So we don't need to list those x's unless for some reason it asks us to know where those happen. So all we care about is that the minimum value is negative 3. And see how positive 3 is the upper value of our range, and negative 3 is the lower value of our range. The 